Hello everybody, Lance here and this is the follow-up video of the camera facing vector displacement in the last video and in this video I'm gonna explain the math behind the nodes of the last video. Now you don't have to be a math expert in order to come up with something like this, okay? This is actually just some basic high school math so if you're just fresh out of high school and still remember all the math I'm sure you will do just fine with a bit of experiment and practicing, okay? Now, for those of you without the knowledge, then before you watch this video, I suggest that you watch the, my two previous videos, the Node Insanity Made Sane and the 2D vs 3D textures. In these two videos, I explain the meaning of values and the, the texture coordinate systems and stuff. So check out these two videos before this one, okay? I'll put the link in the description. Now, I'm not sure what they taught you in high school, but at my high school, they taught me that a vector is defined by two points in 3D space, and each point is defined by a set of three numbers. However, in Blender and pretty much every other 3D application, a vector is defined by a set of three numbers. Now, by definition, this should be a point. So why is it called a vector? This is because the other point of the vector is actually 0, 0, 0, the center of the world, okay? So we can actually ignore the center of the world and call a single point a vector, okay? Next up is normalized vectors. So what is a normalized vector? A normalized vector is a vector that has the length of exactly one unit. We can have uh, many different vectors, but uh, when we normalize a vector, we basically reduce the, the length to 1, okay? Now, on a 2D space, the x and y dimension of a normalized vector is actually the cosine and sine of uh, the angle, okay? Now, let's get down to the business of the camera facing vector, okay? In order to calculate the, the rotation angle to rotate the object to face the camera, we must first somehow calculate the view direction of the camera, okay? And we can actually get the camera view direction using the camera data node. However, the view vector of the camera data node is um, a camera space uh, vector, meaning that the, the entire camera space rotate with the camera. So the center of the camera view will always have the value of uh, 0, 0, 1. And the other pixels on the screen will have different viewed vectors, okay? And these vectors are relative to the center of the view, okay? And uh, it doesn't matter where we rotate the camera, the view vector will always remain the same, okay? And we cannot use this to uh, calculate the, the rotation for the objects. We have to somehow convert this into the world vector and we can do this using the vector transform node and we can transform the, the view direction vector from camera to world. Now the, the view direction will change depends on how you rotate the camera. For example if I look to the left, then the x value should be minus 1, and uh, z and y should be 0. So this point right here is uh, uh, minus 1, 0, 0. And if I look to the right, somewhere like this, x should be 1, and uh, y and z should be 0. So we have 1, 0, 0, which is red right here. Now you should notice that each pixel on the screen has a different vector. Now if we use this input to rotate the model, then individual pixels will have different rotation angle. So this vertex here will rotate differently from this vertex here, and we want all the vertices to rotate exactly the same. Okay? That means that we have to use the exact value of the center right here. Okay? For all the all the vertices, all the points on the model should have exactly the same vector as the center of the, the camera view. Okay, so we cannot use the view vector here, but we can input the vector at the center. Okay, 
zero zero one. This will give us the the same vector for pretty much every point on the model. Okay, and we can transform this vector into world space vector. Okay, so if we look to the right like this, we have one zero zero, which is red, and if we look up like so we have zero zero one which is blue and if we look forward like this we have zero one zero which is green okay now this view direction is a 3d vector but we only care about rotating around the z-axis okay we will not rotate around the z-axis and then rotate around the x-axis to look at the camera like so Okay, this will be a mess when you deal with grass or trees. We want the model to always stay upright when looking at the camera. So to do this, we simply get rid of the Z dimension. And in order, in order to get rid of the Z dimension, we simply multiply 110 to, to the, the vector. Okay. And uh, we also want to invert the vector because right now the vector is pointing from the camera to the model and uh, we want the vector to point the opposite direction from the model to the camera, okay? So instead of multiplying 1, 1, 0, we simply multiply minus 1. This will invert the viewed vector, okay? Or you can use minus 1 here which is pretty much the same okay so now when we look from the back we have green and if we look from the front we have a 0 minus 1 0 so it should be black okay so whatever suits you I just use 1 here and minus 1 here because it's easier to understand this way alright now that we have an inverted vector, the thing is, uh, the vector now has a value, I mean, a length smaller than 1, okay? Because we got rid of the z dimension. This is basically projecting the vector, the 3D vector, onto the, uh, onto the ground, and it loses some of its length. So we need to fix that by normalizing the vector so that it has the length of exactly 1 unit. And Blender provide a normalize math here. This will normalize the vector to force the length to one unit. Now we are ready to start calculating the rotation angle. Okay. So this is uh, the node so far. Okay. So in order to calculate the angle of rotation around the z dimension, I mean the z axis, we have to separate the x, y, z dimension and. Uh, the y dimension will be the sine value of the angle, so we simply carry out a an arc sine operation to reverse the sine into the angle. Now, by default, this node will produce the angle of rotation in such a way that the positive x dimension will look at the camera. Okay. However, since the y dimension does not indicate whether or not the camera is to the left or to the right of the model so right now it will only works when the camera is on the right of the model okay so let's connect this to here to see what's going on so you can see the uh, positive x of the model is looking at the, the camera there you go however it will not work if the camera is on the left of the model because uh, the y value does not indicate whether or not uh, the the angle of rotation the view direction is larger than 90 degree okay so you can see it's assuming that the camera is on the other side and it's looking at the virtual camera on the other side of the model so we will deal with that later for now we want the negative y direction to look at the camera instead of the positive x direction. So we need to rotate the model 90 degree around the z-axis to look to, uh, to the positive x direction before rotating again to look at the camera. Okay, And that is why I add uh, half pi here. Okay, This is this node at 
90 degree to the rotation, okay? And 90 degree in radian unit is half pi, okay? So let's connect this here and see what's going on. So you can see the the model is looking at the camera. However, the problem with uh, the camera being on the left is still not fixed. So to do that, we have to invert the rotation depending on the position of the camera. I mean, whether or not the camera is on the right or to the left. Okay. So we know that if the camera is to the left, let me just, there we go. So you can see that the um, x value of the camera is in negative, okay? And if we look at the, the model from the right, we see that the x value of the camera of the camera vector is uh, positive. So in here, these two math nodes, I get the x value, I calculate the absolute value and divide by the original value. This will produce minus 1 if the camera is to the left and produce 1 if the camera is to the right and I multiply that with the angle of rotation this will invert the rotation if the camera is on the left and not invert the rotation if the camera uh, is on the right okay so connect this to the combined XYZ this is the combined rotation okay and uh, now we should have a proper rotation There we go. And here we rotate the vertices into to the new positions. However, this node will produce the new position for individual vertex. But uh, we, we don't want the new position of the vertex. We want the distance of rotation. I mean, the distance of travel from the original position to the new position. And in order to do that, we simply use a subtract map to subtract the um, new position, I mean, subtract the original position in object space from the new position. This will give us the distance of travel for each vertex. However, right now the distance of travel is in absolute unit, meaning that the, the, the travel will always be the same, regardless of whether or not you scale up the, uh, the model. So without this node, okay, let's try connecting here, there we go, and scale up the model. So you see it doesn't work because the, um, the, the distance of travel is still the same and uh, the object is now scaled much bigger. So for a bigger object, the distance of travel must be bigger, okay. Let's see if, what happens if we scale down the model. And you can see the distance of travel is still the same, but uh, the, the model is now much smaller. So this will basically mess up the model. Now, in order to have the correct displacement, we need to use the vector displacement node and use the object space. This will convert the absolute travel distance into the object space kind of distance. So if you scale up the model, the, the distance of travel will also scale up as well. And that's it. We have a proper rotation. There you go. So you see, this is not like rocket science or anything. This is just simple high school math. And you don't have to be a math genius to come up with something like this. Okay. Now, I'm not quite sure what they're teaching at high school nowadays, so if you have not learned about this kind of math, just stay at school and pay attention to your math teacher until you learn this kind of thing. And the next time somebody tells you something along the line, this math is stupid, you don't use this kind of math in real life, you can just tell them to shut up, they don't know what they're talking about.